And so we have potentially uh, the greatest crisis of humanity, uh, but it's not gone to its height. But the solution cannot come only from Germany. But we still have a reason for optimism, uh, provided we get a a uh, broad discussion in Germany uh, where we have an alliance of sovereign nations that replaces the system of globalization. And there have been new developments that have brought humanity uh, much closer to the chance of this new system. In light of this situation, there is a development of very dramatic uh, consequences, which, as usual, is not really being brought up in the German media. And this was on the 13th of October, where the Russian Prime Minister Putin at a three-day uh, conference in China, together with the uh, Prime Minister also of China, Wen Jiabao, uh, where they had uh, long-term treaty agreements of uh, comprehensive long-term uh, uh, cooperation that's going to encompass uh, hundreds of uh, billions of dollars in, in uh, the areas of uh, train systems, energy supply and other projects in Russia. It's is going to involve a uh, common unmanned uh, space project. Before, President Medvedev, uh, uh, with his uh, counterpart, Hu Jintao, they met before. They uh, had a treaty agreement uh, for 2018, and there are hundreds of uh, projects in the northeast of Russia, Siberia, and the northeast of China, and Putin. Uh, has been uh, basically emphasizing that you want to have uh, working together cooperation in terms of high tech and uh, finishing uh, processes of production. And then on the way to Beijing, uh, there was a very important uh, a meeting in Vladivostok where there were also very important uh, treaty agreements signed. And on the 14th of October, you had a meeting of the Shanghai Corporation Organization that wants to extend the cooperation. And these uh, treaties could possibly be the uh, beginning of a new credit system. I'm not just saying this, but rather we have played a long-term role, especially Mr. LaRouche, as the idea givers. Um, I myself have uh, been involved in this for the last 19 years. And it's not very uh, accidentally. Uh, Mr. LaRouche and myself uh, were in Rodos between the 8th and 12th of October. That was the 7th conference um, of the World Public Forum and Rhodes, the Dialogue of Civilizations, an institution that was uh, brought into being by Russia, uh, by Vladimir Yakunin, the head of the Russian train uh, system society, um, and Yaktish Kapoor from India and a Greek, uh, a very important uh, businessman. And for the seventh time, uh, you had uh, diverse uh, politicians and uh, business people who came together uh, to discuss um, the problems of the world, that they believe that it can be solved through the process of dialogue. And this time, uh, Mr. LaRouche addressed the economics panel, and he held a speech that was... Uh,
put the question of a new system on the table. He said that because of the combination of powers uh, that, that would bring about a, a, a shift to a new system uh, would have to be the US, China, Russia and India uh, working together and that found uh, a lot of uh, resonance amongst the participants. I gave a speech uh, going into why we should have a, uh, an emphasis on these projects and why the EU in, in, the present, in its present form is not uh, in, in a position to uh, participate. Uh, in, in this because of uh, its uh, uh, clinging to neoliberal dogmas and because of uh, the stability pact that has basically tied it uh, to uh, the present system. That's why you can't expect much from the EU. At any rate, the discussion around this uh, issue was very uh, much present, not only uh, at the public speeches, but also in uh, a lot of uh, private discussions with the participants. It was very clear that basically after this uh, meeting, uh, Russia and China were uh, on the verge of going in this direction. And uh, in the wake of uh, uh, this conference and Putin and, and China, uh, in, in China uh, and these things actually being put into uh, uh, action, people were surprised. Uh, because the Russians were... Uh, afraid that the Chinese would uh, actually take over areas of uh, Eastern Russia uh, where there are not uh, very many people there. But they have now uh, basically implemented the, uh, the conditions uh, that uh, solves this uh, problem uh, for China, where uh, Russia uh, has now got the cooperation of China for uh, building a comprehensive uh, train system, and uh, Russia is helping China uh, for the development of uh, nuclear power. And uh, straight after that, in the leading uh, Russian journals and, and newspapers, uh, there was an interview with Mr. LaRouche. It was uh, also uh, in other uh, leading uh, journals the same interview. And a very important uh, human rights activist, uh, uh, a lawyer, um, who uh, brought this about. I uh, have decided to speak to you, Mr. President, probably uh, to, for the last time. Um, to uh, speak to you on the internet. The reason why I'm uh, talking to you is because I would like to uh, bring uh, about um, what, what we were discussing with Mr. LaRouche. Um, I know him personally very well. His, uh, his ideas and what he wants to do to uh, uh, bring together uh, cooperation internationally uh, is a very good contrast to uh, the uh, well-known uh, uh, nightingale of monetarism and uh, in the uh, institutions of the, of the government. Uh, uh, who's these uh, people, Lipschitz, uh, Janssen, Kutrin, Schubais and Co., whose most recent statements are most probably already known to you, if we wish to restore a sovereign Russia, I believe that LaRouche's position on the current financial and economic crisis deserves special, very serious attention. 
because it is not based on short-term considerations. It is competent, backed up by experience of accurate forecasts over recent decades. It is globally responsible, and it indicates real ways out of a general catastrophe. It would be most regrettable if, in determining foreign and domestic policy priorities in such a critical situation for Russia, you were to ignore the experience and knowledge of this outstanding public figure, which are substantial, quite multifaceted, and very much needed, especially now. In the cause of serving our common fatherland, my wish is for you to be more consistent in upholding Russia's national interests and relying on the people to shift as quickly as possible from mere words, as correct as they might be, to their practical implementation. I hope that this will be the case. The a cousin lawyer. This has been circulated uh, around the circles of Medvedev, and uh, this has uh, brought about a large uh, discussion, a broad discussion on, around the ideas of Linda LaRouche. But we haven't st just started discussing these types of issues, but have been doing so. Uh, for 20 years. It is becoming reality. Uh, uh, 1989, after the fall of the war, we had the idea of the productive triangle. That was the idea that after the uh, Iron Curtain uh, was no longer there, that had separated East from West. Uh, that you would have uh, Paris, Berlin, Vienna, that basically uh, uh, encompasses uh, an area the size of Japan with conscious traits, uh, very high technologies and industrial capacity. For example, we wanted to have a maglev uh, uh, to be built there, um, high temperature reactors, uh, uh, Inherently uh, uh, secure uh, uh, nuclear power plants, and then to have uh, corridors from um, Berlin uh, to Kiev in the Balkan region. And instead of having the, uh, the shock therapy, um, that you have the obsolete industrial capacity uh, to modernize the infrastructure in the East. Um, in 1991, after the Soviet Union uh, was, uh, had disintegrated, this idea uh, became the idea of the Eurasian land bridge. That means the uh, uh, population uh, centers in Asia uh, would be brought together with the uh, West through um, development corridors, uh, where you would have uh, transportation uh, corridors, uh, um, train systems, uh, waterways, uh, computerized uh, uh, train stations, uh, new uh, ways, uh, new energy uh, methods of supplying energy. And this uh, you would basically allow countries, landlord countries, to have the same uh, benefits that countries that are on uh, uh, large, uh, that are on, on, on large ports close to the oceans. I haven't actually counted how many conferences I um, did on this uh, topic, but they must have been hundreds. Uh, in, in Latin America, in, uh, in, in um, um, American cities and, and even in African uh, uh, countries, uh, could we have the Eurasian land bridge? For a long time, we were lonely uh, callers in the desert. People said, oh, who could pay for this? This is a utopia that could never uh, happen. But we, uh, were, we were consistent and we said, this, this has to happen. 
wie gesagt, wir haben, äh, können wir jetzt mal einige von den Bildern sehen. Uh, could we, also could we see some of the pictures? Uh, we also had our own conferences on this. This is 19... Uh, Uh, I took uh, a trip uh, uh, around these um, uh, cities that were supposed to be on the Eurasian land bridge, Beijing, Nanjing. Um, this is where the Eurasian land bridge uh, 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 turns. Um, This is where the uh, high-temperature reactors are uh, is being uh, extended. I was with uh, Professor Vlov, uh, who was from the Academy of Sciences, Professor Torrentko. And that was practically a journey which... Uh, should have recruited um, the regional uh, industrial uh, uh, bosses for this idea. Uh, Could we see the next uh, picture? In New Delhi, uh, this is now in New Delhi. You see Mr. LaRouche speaking uh, to the man on his right. That is the former uh, Prime Minister uh, from India Gorjal. And that is Mr. Kapoor on the left. Uh, uh, from the Rhodes Forum. And uh, this is a, a state visit um, of the um, state president of um, Azerbaijan. And he was a former uh, ambassador in Washington. He asked uh, Mr. LaRouche 19 years after he was in India the last time uh, And he asked Mr. LaRouche to come to India again because Mr. LaRouche is a, a real friend of India. This is the former Minister Yadov. He was in Indira Gandhi's cabinet. We have a very good situation in India because um, in 1979, we worked on a, a development program for India. And we had a lot of uh, chances to speak to Indira Gandhi. And that's why the ministers from this time were totally enthusiastic about Mr. LaRouche. He is the only American we can American American we can trust. And Mr. Yadov um, passed away, unfortunately. He had a very large uh, movement in India, and these are diverse articles um, that uh, were just reporting on our journeys in this context. This is uh, 2007 in Kietrich. We had a conference on this issue, the construction of the Eurasian land bridge after the crash. This was basically after the uh, housing bubble had crashed. And we had a program at this point. How could we uh, rebuild the world after this? And this is uh, Mr. Rouge and uh, Professor Menchikov, who is one of the um, great experts on the New Deal. He uh, worked together with uh, James Gol uh, John Galbraith. And he understands the American system very well. Ja, das ist jetzt äh, ein Artikel von mir. That's glaube, uh, an article Artikel, by myself. Uh, Rede, die ich 2001 uh, That about a speech in 2001 uh, that I, when I was in, uh, in, in the Duma, speaking about the Eurasian land bridge as a uh, peace plan, uh, whereby you would uh, basically bring Eurasia together uh, through this uh, cooperation, these projects, you would find a common uh, level of, of, of rationality, of reason, and that would be the best peace plan. Uh, that's this Mr. LaRouche in uh, Russian TV. He was there very often. This is another um, 
program, television program. That's a conference that Mr. LaRouche had uh, with uh, uh, an important Chinese uh, uh, organization in, in uh, Los Angeles. Um, an organization that um, is trying to reintegrate Taiwan to the, to the uh, mainland. And they published LaRouche's speech in China. And so in the, in the last period, uh, there have been a lot of uh, newspapers that, in China that have been discussing this Four Powers Agreement. In 2001, you had a uh, one-day uh, seminar in the Duma that, that was uh, organized by Glasiev. Uh, where different experts um, were uh, discussing the financial crisis. I, I just wanted to show you these pictures so that you know that when we're discussing these things, uh, they're not just programmatic uh, suggestions. Um, LaRouche has been, uh, for uh, the past six years, I for the past 36 years, please don't uh, calculate the years. Um, we worked on this conception uh, to, to realize this conception, how you can get a, a new uh, a reorganization of a new financial system. And, uh, for example, in 2007, uh, 2007, we were at a conference in Moscow where we were discussing uh, the uh, where we want to bring the uh, 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 a, a, a train line uh, over the Bering Straits where you are uh, bringing together the Trans-Siberian uh, Railway towards the Bering Strait and then uh, to build a tunnel uh, 100 kilometers to Alaska. And I can assure you that the level of enthusiasm that were at this conference of scientists, uh, they were like young boys and they were saying, yes, in 20 years, when, when we have this maglev uh, train system over the uh, Barrick Straits into the Americas, and we can go from Acapulco and Mexico faster, uh, uh, we can travel faster to Mumbai uh, overland uh, as opposed to um, on, on, on the sea route. Da kann man also ganz schnell auf dem Landweg hinfahren. Und das ist also, das ist jetzt auf der That is what is now on the agenda. It was, uh, it was the, a Russian policy to do this at the time when George Bush was still in power. And also the governor of Alaska was uh, totally uh, for it, Sarah Palin. Uh, you might know her, who was also... Uh, who is no longer in, 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 uh, power, in, in her position, was also for it. And now uh, the Chinese have said, because the crisis is there, we are not allowed to reduce this development, but we must uh, escalate it in order to get out of the crisis. And that is very important. So, what this development is about, going back to this uh, Bering Tunnel, uh, this, de uh, this uh, development in Siberia and the Far East in Russia, where, by the way, you have the greatest uh, uh, raw material reserves of the world. It's not just about uh, raw materials extraction, but it, it's about extraction under uh, uh, permafrost uh, um, uh, conditions to, um, to develop these raw materials, to actually be able to get to them and uh, develop them. So and the people who work there uh, to, for, to have livable conditions, um, to have transportation, com communication, energy supply, uh, 
industries for the uh, continuation of, of um, uh, the processing of the raw materials. Uh, for China, this is very important. China, unfortunately, uh, fell into the trap of globalization. They uh, were talked into being the cheap labor country for the West. And it has a, a double uh, uh, problematic side. Whoever's been to China knows uh, that, that from a totally underdeveloped uh, position, they developed to a, a really developed country, but not the whole country. I was there uh, at the, uh, the only journalist uh, at the time, 1971, at the time of the Cultural uh, Revolution, um, who was allowed in at that time. In Shanghai, at that point, you had 10,000 bicycles and one car. I went to Chenxin and to Beijing, and that was a, a normal journey. Uh, you had cars on this road with uh, chickens and goats, and it was uh, very busy. And in 1996, I went back there um, at a conference on, on the uh, construction of the Eurasian land bridge. And you had a highway uh, that was very smooth. You could, it was I mean, really fast. You don't have in Germany not a single highway that is in this uh, uh, state. And of course, the uh, coastal regions of China have developed enormously, but 70% of their population, the Chinese population, is in a very backward uh, situation, uh, basically of, from, the, from the Stone Age. And now China's uh, export, mar export markets are collapsing, uh, especially in the United States. They have two trillion dollar uh, currency reserves. Uh, one trillion is in dollars, and uh, the devaluing of the dollar uh, of these um, treasury bonds would, of course, be a problem. So, at this uh, time when China is having these treaties uh, in, in uh, that that are uh, worth. Uh, billions and billions of, of US, do, uh, US dollars, um, the, the money now has a value. At, at, if China just sits on them, they're not going to get anything from it. And, and, the, and that, at that time when they invested, China is uh, in a position, together with these countries, to launch a new credit system.